Katerina Karidi, thank you so much for being here. Uh, for Hi, hello. Thank uh, you for having uh, me. I see the, the keys behind you. Uh, yeah, there is a microphone. I'm, I'm trying to record from home, which is a pain in the butt because I'm not good at it. But, you know, I can't go to the studio because uh, we are on, uh, on the regional lockdown in Italy. And uh, the person I record with is in, in uh, you know, lives in another region. So I can go there. So he's teaching me via Skype how to record with Ableton from home. So at least I can record some demos. And then when we are able to meet, I'm not gonna record my album from home because I'm just very bad at it, but you know, at least to, to see what comes up. No, right? You could, it's hard, you know, it's yeah, hard. I, I mean, you know I've never tried, I've never you tried have to, so. you have to play, sing, push all the buttons, and make sure that all the <clears> tracks are being recorded and like you don't mess up, and your cats are walking around, and your neighbors starting to repair things, and it's just uh. Yeah, it's hard. I, I I really appreciate people who, who are able to do that. That's I'm not a, one of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's true though, actually, because just before we started this this interview, the the garbage men came and took the garbage, and this big truck going by, and I was like, oh wow, I'm really glad the interview didn't start yet, because <laughs> it it would have been audible. So yeah, I kind of get where you're coming from. Um, and the cats going by. Yeah, all right. Yeah, you know, you never think you never think of those things. On, on one of the songs from my first record, I think there are well, there are a lot of nature sounds because we recorded in the middle of nowhere with open windows at night, right. and there are like uh, insects and uh, things falling down and stuff. And I also have some uh, samples of my cat who actually died not bef long before I, I finished recording, and uh, I think I might insert it into the new album. Maybe some some meows, some like maybe we'll open them or something. I'm sorry for the loss of your cat. Uh, Thank you. It happens. Uh, it's, you know, we, we, got a new, we rescued a new one and there are two of them and they are happy and we are happy, so. That's good. That's good. We, um, we had, my wife and I had a dog named Dio uh, oh. who we got when she was eight weeks old and we had her until September 2018. Uh, she was 12 and she got cancer and we had to put her down and I am still, I, I don't know if you can hear my voice. Oh, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. Uh, yeah. 12 is a good age though. Yeah, we, we tried again with a puppy recently uh, and, and it just kept biting our son. So it didn't quite, oh. didn't quite. So my, so my mother got a new dog. <laughs> okay, well so, you can go visit them. Please. Yes, exactly. Um, but again, for the pandemic. Anyway. Uh, hey. You mentioned the uh, the rural spot where you recorded Covered Mirrors. Uh, I would like to know more about that place. Um, what? How did you end up there? What is kind? Of, what kind of became your relationship to the place and the place's relationship to the album? And and just sort of set the scene for me, if you will. Okay, it was easy because that's where uh, the person who recorded my album lives. He's a friend of mine. He used to play uh, with the band uh, I'm friends with. He has now other bands, but he's also very interested in uh, sound engineering, recording. Uh, amateurly, I don't think he does it professionally, although he might, I think. Is that Lorenzo? Um, sorry? Is that Lorenzo? Yes, Lorenzo. One of the Lorenzo's because the one who recorded and mixed is called Lorenzo and also the other who mastered it uh, is called Lorenzo. So, but the second Lorenzo lives in Rome, which is on the other side of Italy. Uh, first Lorenzo lives not far from here where I cannot go now because of the, this somewhat lockdown we have. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's his family home. It's a very old house they restored and it's a huge property with the forest on one side and some neighbors, but not really, it's not in the middle of a town or something. So there is a lot of land and a lot of, um, you can hear on the record, you can hear insects because we recorded the vo vocals, we recorded them mostly at night because it was so all peaceful and quiet and we just opened the window because it was also really uh, warm because it was summer. And you can hear the, um, the noises of uh, different insects, uh, um, cicadas, I think they're called in English. Okay. And Yes, thank you. And, uh, and other, uh, other sounds, which uh, I found really uh, soothing, you know. 
and uh, all the samples on the record, the rain and the, uh, the, the, the thunderstorm, I recorded them all by myself, just with my phone, because I like recording sounds of the nature, just you never know. Uh, some of them are recorded uh, in Italy, some of them are recorded in Africa when I was on, the, on my honeymoon in Zanzibar. <laughs> there's a lot of, uh, in Tanzania, uh, there's a lot of uh, sounds uh, everywhere because of the animals walking around and uh, the rains just pouring down. And uh, so I, I like that a lot uh, because it's, uh, it's pr pretty raw, just, you know, the he, Lorenzo worked on them a little bit, but not really, not too much. So it's actual sounds of, of actual uh, things I, I've lived through. And uh, the place we recorded in is just, you know, uh, there is a big uh, wooden house and a smaller house made of wood and stone. And we recorded in that one. And uh, I don't understand much about how the sounding works, but he tells me that uh, that's a perfect place to record the, um, because the echo inside is just uh, perfect. And um, and the, all the natural materials around you, they like create this warm atmosphere sort of, so we didn't really have to use much effects, just, uh, yeah. And uh, I really felt uh, at peace and relaxed uh, uh, recording there. So I really want to, I would like to record the second album there as well. I don't know when it's going to happen because, uh, you know, we cannot really travel much, but uh, hopefully maybe by, by summer, I'm mm -hmm. hoping. So yeah, the, the place is just beautiful. So much, so much history in there, and you know, uh, all the nature around. It's really, it really, really helps you to set the mood. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. Get in the mindset as well as kind of get the audio. Yeah. Um, can you talk about uh, the the sort of the Russian roots that come out through the album? Um, when did you move to Italy uh, and, and what is your kind of relationship to, to Russian traditional music? Right, so um, I grew up in Russia before, uh, I, I lived in different places, and then I end up, ended up in Italy uh, permanently. I came here to, um, to do my master's degree to study basically, but I've always wanted to. I was uh, always passionate about like uh, um, Roman, ancient Roman mythology and history. And I always wanted to, to see Rome and learn Italian because Italian is such a beautiful language. And um, when I came here, uh, um, uh, so no, right, uh, let's go back to, to Russia. Uh, when I was uh, growing up, I tried different things, uh, sports, dancing, swimming, you know, like kids in Russia, usually they keep them busy because the parents work. My, both of my parents are engineers, so they work full time. Uh, and I had to be, you know, after the, the daycare, they would uh, send you to, to do different things, uh, sports, uh, drawing, painting, swimming, whatever. I did dancing, swimming. Then I started going to a musical school where I, I spent uh, seven years graduating from there i actually wanted to i was thinking about the career of uh, well not going into into classical music because uh, that's what i studied i really loved classical music but uh, the thing i loved the most was singing and uh, I, I i studied piano uh, i wasn't really good at it because i was really lazy <laughs> i i still finished because i didn't want to you know give up but uh, i wasn't really passionate about it back then. I actually started playing uh, piano again after many years, just recently. That's why the first record doesn't have any keys in it, but the second one will. I'm writing, uh, I actually remembered how much easier it is for me to write on the piano because uh, it's such a, it's a polyphonic instrument. It's all right there, so. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know it better than the guitar because guitar I'm self-taught and as you can hear, it's very simple and basic. Um, uh, acoustic guitar. So in Russia, when I was going to that music school, we were we had a choir. We we were singing there, and it was a lot of uh, traditional Russian folk songs. And there is like just beautiful polyphony to it, uh, singing with different uh, voices. And I've always loved that uh, very much. And uh, it's also very sad. It's all like minor keys and also all um, solemn. Uh, which uh, 
I this this is the kind of sound I really like, and uh, I've also listened to a lot of classical music, which is also very dramatic and and uh, sad at times, uh, and uh, so. Well, the kind I liked anyway. Um, um, so yeah, the Russian roots are, I mean, they're in me. I, I grew up there, I was born there. I am Russian, uh, although I travel my, a lot and I lived in different places. It's still going always to be, always going to be my, where I come from. Uh, and in the record, uh, there are uh, a few um, referrals to, to the Russian culture with the name. Uh, the name of the uh, of my alter ego. I don't like the word project referred to art, but mm -hmm. I mean that's uh, the name is Kariti, which means uh, uh, more the dead in uh, archaic uh, um, liturgical language. It's uh, it's not the word anybody ever uses anymore, but uh, it's just perfectly summed up what uh, <clears throat> the record was about and what uh, uh, my musical journey was about. And um, the, the name of the album, Covered Mirrors, it's also referring to the tradition in, in Slavic cultures, but also in many different others, in Jewish culture, in, in Southern Italy, uh, Southern Italian culture, and uh, many others, to cover the mirrors when somebody dies in a, in a home so that the spirit <coughs> of the deceased is not, um, trapped in, uh, well, there are different explanations to the practice, but that's just, I felt it's such a beautiful uh, visual, uh, visual uh, representation of, uh, of mourning, which is what my record is mostly about. So uh, then there is the song, the only song in Russian, which is based on a folk, uh, very ancient folk melody. I just fell in love with the melody. Uh, the song, the original song is about reincarnation, about how one of the sisters uh, goes to the river, dies, and then gets reincarnated into the river itself and all the stones around and, and grass and everything. It's a beautiful song, but I wanted to give it my own meaning. So I wrote a different uh, poem uh, for it. It just poured out. Uh, so uh, there is just one song in Russian and the other song uh, is a tr uh, translation of a poem by one of my favorite um, poets, Anna Akhmatova. Uh, the song is called Anna and uh, the second part of the name is uh, Requiem to Death yeah. because that's what uh, her poem was called. It's, uh, it's part of the bigger poem and it's just a beautiful uh, ode to death and to its death. So um, I wanted to try, it's a like free translation of, uh, of her poem because I thought it was so interesting and I thought uh, that people who don't understand Russian might be interested in, um, in seeing what it is about. So yeah, there are a lot of, uh, there is a lot of Russia in, in, uh, in what I make as, as a musician and uh, yeah. It's, I wanted to ask specifically about that poem. I found a translation uh, online and, and read the text of the poem. It's beautiful, this poem, and, and of course, tragic. The uh, original poem, you mean? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, can you tell me uh, if you remember when you first encountered that poem and kind of what, what drove you to want to do your own translation of it and put it into song? Yes, I um, I have uh, some books uh, brought with me from Russia. My mom brought it uh, to me. Some some of my favorite books, and a lot of them are poetry. So um, I just read them from time to time because I don't really have much opportunity to speak Russian all that often. Living here, and uh, I work mostly in English. I work in Russian as well, but not that uh, not that much. And I just don't want to forget, you know, forget my language. It's a very rich, very beautiful, uh, complex language. And I uh, realized in time, by learning other languages and living in other countries, I started losing um, the the richness of my vocabulary. And uh, sometimes my mom would tell me like, "You are inventing words. You're just making up words now." <laughs> So I, I started read uh, um, in Russian, trying to read in Russian as much as I could. And uh, I just was reading the, the poems by Anna Akhmatov. I have a book of them. 
and uh, I just stumbled upon it and I, I just love the way she uh, described uh, death, the imminent death and uh, the way she was approaching it and she was ready and she was sort of uh, challenging it. Uh, and I thought that it was a way to look at uh, death from a different perspective. Uh, because a lot of people are afraid of death and afraid of dying, afraid of losing uh, their people. And uh, her way uh, of looking at it was so uh, brave. So I thought that needs to be out there. So I just, I just, yeah, I don't know. I fell in love with it and I, I decided to, to put it in a, in, in a song. And um, you mentioned moving to Italy wanting to learn to speak Italian. Um, of course, there's Il Corvo on the record. Um, right. I'm working in English. There's there's this kind of, between <laughs> between all these kind of a, opposing sides, although not really opposing, but you know, different sides. Um, you get this kind of cosmopolitan uh, overarching feel between the Russian and, and working in English and Italian and, and all this stuff. It just seems like what struck me in listening is that there's there are different different sides being shown, but what's unifying everything is the performance. Um, and there's a very at the same time there's a very personal uh, sensibility to the album, and, and it, you know it's interesting you're talking about kind of recording in this natural environment, and you know the 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 warmth getting the warmth of the natural materials of the building you're recording in. Um, how much do you feel the album with kind of with the acknowledgement that it's a first record uh how much do you feel the album represents kind of that that part of who you are oh, that's a <laughs> that's a great question uh so i don't know if you read any other interviews i um I had uh, people ask me similar questions. Uh, and uh, so I have to explain why I made this album. I'm not a, it's, as you said, it's my first album. I've been listening to music for my whole life. I've been singing just like, you know, with some friends uh, at the university bands and stuff like that, but I never did any anything seriously. I was part of the collective putting up shows, promoting shows. So I've been around musicians uh, for as long as I can remember myself, but I've never had a, I don't know, courage or whatever to to record my own because I am a private person and putting myself out there so much was not easy. And the fact that I've never played a show yet because of, of the uh, pandemic, on one hand is really sad, on the other, I'm sort of relieved a little bit because I think the first time is going to be very intense for me. Mm -hmm. The first, uh, first live, uh, live. I want to, I really want to play uh, in front of people, but I also am um, afraid. <laughs> um, so there's a lot of, uh, of me in that record because all the songs, well, most of them anyway, are based on my personal uh, experiences, on personal loss, on personal uh, journey through parting with uh, loved ones and uh, coping with it and going through it. Uh, some of them uh, happened very long time ago. Some of them were more recent. And uh, I just felt the need to uh, express myself. Uh, well, what I did is write poetry. I've always wrote poetry throughout my life uh, since I was a child. And uh, looking at my poems from 15 uh, years ago, my mom brought me uh, a notebook of my when I was like I don't know twelve. Man, you should see what what I wrote there. Like how did I mean? Now they would probably lock me up in a, in some mental health institution for what I wrote there because I would be on suicide watch or something. I was not suicidal at all. I just was. Uh, ex you were just twelve. Yes. Right, right. But it's intense. So um, uh, you mentioned Il Corvo, which is uh, raven or uh, um, crow in Italian. That song is actually uh, a metaphor. It's, uh, um, it's based on a real story. I, I rescued a, um, an injured um, bird with a broken wing 
on my birthday, actually, just walked out uh, to go to have a walk at the park. And there it was, this bird feeding on some moldy um, trash, garbage, and then had a broken wing. I rescued it uh, together with uh, some animal uh, protection services here. And uh, a couple of days after I called them to, to, to ask how he was, and they told me that he didn't make it because the uh, infection was so intense. And I thought, okay, so I need to like celebrate his life in some way. So I, uh, that poem just came up, but then it's also a metaphor about um, my own experiences. So everything in this album is personal, everything, maybe too much even, uh, but, um, there are different poems I wrote through, ye through the years and uh, at some point I just uh, decided to, to, to write some simple basic music for it. So to turn it into songs because uh, singing is something I, I really enjoy. That's how it was born. I needed it to exist. It was cathartic for me to write and then it so happened that somebody heard it and told me you have to make it into a record and then somebody heard it and said, okay, I want to put it up, put it out. So talking about my label mm -hmm. i i was not looking for labels i was not like i didn't know what to do with it i was just okay let's record it because then i can hear uh, what it is and then yeah i uploaded one song and it all happened so um for many musicians uh, that's what they do like they sit down and write songs because they want to uh, write songs and make music for me it was um coming from the lyrics first and uh, it is very personal. That's uh, what you asked. So. How does uh, how does something become too personal? In that, um, that's a good question. Um, probably what I meant is um, by putting it out there and uh, actually uh, hearing what people had to say about what they how they interpreted it. Um, I had people write me that they, um, um, that it helped them to go through some hard times in, in their lives. And uh, some other people told me that even though they don't understand the lyrics of the Russian song, that was the their favorite song on the record. And um, so uh, it was very interesting to, to see how different uh, people from different parts uh, of the world interpreted it. Uh, and then maybe, what I mean is maybe um, I get too exposed in that record, my feelings, my emotions, but I'm not, I, I don't regret. Uh, I don't, um, what I mean by too, being too personal is that probably when I start playing those songs live, it's going to be uh, somewhat um, hard for me. But uh, again, we'll see, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Is, um, have you uh, given any thought to doing a, a live stream as kind of a way to broach playing live without, obviously without having a crowd there? Um, I mean, yeah, I've been asked uh, a couple of times to, to play some something in live streaming, but it's a format I, uh, I'm a, I'm an avid music listener and I listen to music a lot and I watch a lot of uh, performances and videos. And of course, I mean, I, I used to go to like three shows a week when it was possible. Uh, and uh, live streaming is not a format I enjoy because there is no contact with the public. So watching my favorite bands play uh, on my computer screen it's the same as watching a YouTube video of their performance mm -hmm. from before. Uh, I mean, if there is no alternative, I will go and watch uh, a live stream. But if there is a tiny chance of having, of being in the same room with the people who are playing, that's always going to be my choice. So as an artist, I just uh, don't see myself, well, first of all, having a quality live stream is hard you have to be like good at it and you know iphone performances i mean we've had enough of those probably so some bands did like some bands had anniversaries this year and they did great live shows live 
uh, live streaming shows and the, the, the bar is so high. So uh, unless I'm able to produce something with it, which, which I'm now, and also being the first time playing with no public, it's just not, just doesn't feel right for me. So I prefer to wait when it's safe, when it's possible to have a small uh, intimate gathering and, uh, and play a first, uh, first show then. Also, there is no touring. So that as well, because I mean, you can play one show in your hometown, then you have to go somewhere else. So no, live streaming is not something I would like to, to do as a first um, performance. Fair enough. Um, can you talk a little bit about what you've written for the, the next album you mentioned? Uh, writing music on piano as opposed to guitar. Um, yeah. Are those, are those next songs, uh, are those coming directly from poems too? Or are you writing music and putting words to it, which would be a different process? Uh, well, on the cover of Mirrors, most of the songs came from poems, but not all of them. Some of them uh, were just nice uh, melodies I had and I, I thought, uh, marrying the, the, the melody with, uh, with a poem or writing the words with that metric. Uh, now I'm writing both on guitar and, um, and piano. I also got myself an, an electric guitar. The first album is recorded with an acoustic guitar. I got myself um, an electric guitar and uh, a few effects, some, some pedals, which is something I had no idea how to use. I'm just trying to, to learn how to, to use the, the very simple ones, you know, delay and uh, reverb and um, some distortion. Uh, so uh, I'm writing uh, some riffs, some, some melodies on, on, on the guitar and also um, just sit down uh, at, a, at the piano uh, here and then just improvise and some nice uh, melodies uh, were born. I, at the same time, I'm writing poems, lyrics, just sparse, you know, like here and there, just uh, something comes to my mind, I write it on a piece of paper or on my phone and then, so now it's all like a dump of, of things. There is no, I have a concept in mind, it's an idea which I don't want to talk about now, uh, but... Well, there goes uh, my next question. Yeah. Sorry? I said, well, there goes my next question. <laughs> Sorry. No. Uh, I, will give, I, will, I will give you something, but uh, <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's definitely related to the previous theme. And uh, it's probably going to be a little bit more specific and definitely less personal. I have enough, um, I like, got outside of my, uh, my own, uh, I mean, I, I put my demons to rest with the first record. I exercised them and I, um, it actually did its job for me. So now I'm uh, writing about other things that I care about, but that probably not directly affected me. Um, so yeah. It's going, I, I, I don't know uh, how it's going to sound uh, musically. It's definitely going to be fuller in sound uh, compared to the first record because there's going to be just more instruments. Uh, and, uh, but the, the final um, song is always born when I'm in the studio because uh, this is how I uh, arrange it. Like I, I, play, uh, I play the melody, uh, I sing, and then, oh, let's add this uh, maybe here, and then let's, let's, let's add this here. Actually, Lorenzo, who recorded my album, he, uh, he always gives me some, uh, like, discuss and brainstorm ideas. He is responsible for the way it sounds as well, the, the first record. So um, he always has these crazy ideas. Oh, let's do this, let's do that. Oh, okay, let's see, let's try. <laughs> Um, so, uh, I have, uh, material for maybe four songs now. Um, uh, I am very, um, inspiration based. Uh, I don't sit down and write every day because I also have a job and other things to do. But when, uh, when it's, when it like comes, I just, uh, if I can, I just drop everything and I write. 
So I think uh, maybe during 2021, I will finish, uh, maybe like by autumn, I, I can finish the songs and then uh, we can start uh, recording, maybe do a session or two and then maybe sometime in the second part of 2022, it will be ready. Uh, also because Covered Mirrors isn't even, uh, I mean, it's not even out there completely because uh, it only came out on, on the CD and I never played live yet. And this is a good time to announce that it will come out on vinyl soon. So we don't know when because the plants are uh, in hiatus. I mean, everything is like up in the air, but uh, my label and I um, are going to, so it's, it's going to be released on vinyl because a lot of people write me and ask me like, okay, CD is cool, digital is cool, but I want vinyl when is going to be vinyl that I also love vinyl obviously so I also want my record on vinyl so it's going to uh, to be um, a thing some I hope by the end of 2021 mm -hmm. and uh, there is actually going to be one more song on vinyl compared to the original version because there is uh, there is a song I wrote while we were recording uh, it was i think it belonged on the on the record but i completed it when we were already done and uh so it's perfect it's going to be there like an extra bonus whatever uh, you want to call it and uh i need i just need to record it you know i have to go to, <laughs> to a studio to record it and then we can start uh talking exact dates uh, of, of the release and everything yeah <laughs> uh has with the first album done and and you know, such as it is, uh, how has that changed your perspective on, on your thinking of yourself as a musician? Mm -hmm. uh, how has that been different for you? You know, you're someone with with a record now, you know, as opposed to who you are as a writer as opposed to who you are as, as someone with a job, as opposed to who you are in your personal life. Um, going into your second album, has, does the fact that you have, does the fact that it's something you've done before, how has that changed your, your perspective? So first of all, um, I have still have hard time thinking of myself as a musician because it's not something I do full time because it's basically impossible to live off independent music so i have to have uh, of course. but i also like what i do i uh, i like other things i do in life so music is just one of my biggest passions and it's uh, definitely something um i am very glad i threw myself into because uh it took me a while to get there to uh, it actually I have to thank my friends who are musicians who make independent music without being like full-time musicians necessarily and have day jobs and then they take vacation and go on tours uh, across the ocean. So looking at those people, uh, my husband in the first place, but also all of my, like most of my friends are somewhat connected to music, uh, to, to independent DIY music. Uh, I realized that you don't have to choose between doing music and, and, and having uh, a job that pays your bills you know or other passions other uh, other things you do so uh i really like the idea that i i finally got the guts <laughs> to <laughs> to make uh, to make a record and the second one uh well i am a little bit more confident before the uh, the first one was uh it was uh, i was not confident at all and uh i just uh, made it list like gave it to my closest friends uh, who I knew that would be um, honest with me as in uh, like okay that's something makes sense make a record out of it just like no we like don't um, so with the with this new record I'm a little bit more confident I'm also very I'm looking forward to to writing it because that's my favorite process because when it's uh, all coming together and that the song is born it's just it's the most beautiful feeling uh it's i don't know i've never played live so for many musicians playing live is the most uh exciting part of being a musician for me it's writing writing and recording uh because 
as I said, recording is when the song is actually in its final form and uh, it's just so, it's a beautiful feeling. And um, I'm looking forward to composing the, the songs and uh, I'm a little bit more comfortable, but um, also I know that more people will uh, look at it now and like, okay, she did the first one like this and now she's doing this. And uh, so I'm, I'm not saying I'm, I'm, I just, it's in the back of my, of my mind that uh, I'm not writing for myself anymore, for only for myself anymore, because there's a label who is going to release it. And there are people who um, will listen to it because they like the first record. Um, so it's, um, uh, it's interesting. I think I think uh, I'm sort of growing, although I'm not in the age of growing that much anymore. But uh, as a as an artist, I'm definitely uh, growing with the second uh, with the second record. So I li I like it. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Do you have any sense of of how long the lockdown is is going to be where you are? Have they given a an end date? No, they're changing from like week to week. We go from yellow zone to orange zone to red zone to whatever zone. Now we are in yellow, so the cafes and bars are open, but only until six in, in the evening. And uh, there are no shows, no sport events, no public gatherings. Uh, but the spring is coming and uh, last lockdown, it started in March. The weather was insane. It was so warm and beautiful outside and everybody was everybody was stuck at home so i don't think people are going to be uh, as disciplined this time mm. so and that means that they will prolong the lockdown right so i really i don't know i don't i don't think we are going to see any um public gatherings in 2021 i don't think so I mean, maybe some small shows. Well, they've already started canceling all the summer festivals and summer uh, summer shows. Uh, but there are, uh, I mean, in November, there's supposed to be Viagra Boys show in Bologna, which is in Italy. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, they're coming from Sweden because uh, the thing is that a lot of bands who come from, say, United States are not going to happen because you guys cannot travel now. Right, yeah, no, because who's gonna let us in, really? <laughs> No, no, I don't know. I no, mean, I, I, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't let us in. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm stuck at home. I usually travel for work a lot and it's like driving me a little crazy. So, but I also understand the importance of it. And, uh, but the European ones, maybe European bands can come and play. So I don't know. Let's see, maybe some small shows, you know, a couple of bands here and there, distancing and things like that. Maybe uh, in the open in summer. Mm. Yeah, I think, I think. I think outdoor shows is going to be kind of people scrounging yeah. to get what they can get when they can get it kind of thing. Um, True, but also, you know, the weather, I mean, it can rain and you have to have the tent. And uh, I was into uh, organizing concerts and there's just so much planning goes into it. And then the weather just goes crazy. And uh, of course, so. of course. Well, on that happy note, uh, Katerina, thank you so much for your time. I'm going to, I'm going to stop recording. Thank you for having me and uh, for uh, what, what, what you do for, for music, for musicians, for just, you know, writing and promoting and like talking about what happens. I'm, I've learned so many things from your uh, website all, over the years. <laughs> so, so many new bands. And I'm, so stopping, many I'm stopping the recording. No.